All right, all right. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Shut the fuck up, would you? Jesus Christ. Well, uh, I want to start by, uh, you know, I'd like to make everybody feel feel comfortable around me. So, I'd like to start by talking about my penis. You know, my penis is so small, my girlfriend, she can never tell if I'm coming or going. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you know, a lot of people, they say, eh, you know, no man would uh, talk about his penis if it was that small. Well, that's true. But as small as my penis is, I technically don't qualify as a man. As a matter of fact, the other day I got arrested for pedophilia for holding my own penis while I was taking a piss. <laughs> See, a lot of people, they uh, seem to think that I just make jokes like that because I'm Asian. They say, oh, that's, that's just a negative Asian stereotype. But I can prove it. You see, when I was 12 years old, I thought I had my first pube until I peed out of it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've only had experience with one Asian penis before in my entire life. And statistically speaking, that means that 100% of Asian penises that I've experienced are small. <laughs> so the other day, I thought I had lost my coke, but I uh, ended up that it was right under my nose the whole time. Yeah, I was going to do some of it, but I had to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> Has your ass ever been so sweaty that you can't tell if you're farting or sharting? And I'm terrified of that when I'm sitting down. Uh, every time I have to fart, I always end up kicking one of my legs up to the side. Because apparently, in my mind, if my asshole is wide or open, then any shit that I have is going to turn into gas. <laughs> I hate when your brain decides to section off your shit. You know, like, apparently it's going to be more convenient if you have to visit the bathroom ten times throughout the day, rather than just taking one big giant shit that rips open your asshole. <laughs> you know, speaking of assholes, sometimes alcohol can mean the difference between being an asshole or being a comedian. The other day, when my friend Denny was drunk, he knocked over one of my cups, and I was like, you fucking asshole. But then a week later, my friend Neil came over and was like, hey man, I got something to tell you. I fucked your mom, and I was like, ah, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to tell you a little bit about myself. My life story is about being broke. Every time that I have money, I always tell myself, well, there's no point in having money if I don't spend it. But the way that my mind works, I tend to think that if I don't spend my money on what I want immediately, it'll go away. Like, oh, if I don't buy some McDonald's right now, it might not be there next week. <laughs> you know, people talk a lot of shit about McDonald's. But people don't realize that there's really no food that's unhealthy. Let's go ahead and look at a couple scenarios here. Let's say that you don't eat anything for an entire month. What do you think is going to happen? Now let's look at the alternative. Let's say that you eat nothing but cheeseburgers for an entire month. Well, in one scenario, you end up dead. In the other one, you're still alive. So, I think we can safely conclude that no food is unhealthy. You know, one of my favorite feelings is leaving the gym. And not because I feel accomplished, it's because I'm leaving the gym. You know, anytime somebody leaves the gym, they always say something like, Oh, I burned a thousand calories, I feel so great. Really? Why? You know, people never say that about losing anything else. Oh, I lost my job, I'm so happy. Oh, I lost my father, I have so much energy now. And yet calories are the only thing that's on our side. It gives you energy. You need it for survival. They're not like your job or your family. Oh, I got yelled at by my calories today. Oh, my calories cost so much drama. I don't even want to go to the next caloric reunion. Got to drive all the way to California. <laughs> but despite that, we want nothing to do with them. Oh, this has so many calories, it's going to give me tons of energy. Oh, I don't want that. I'd rather go to work at my family business where I can get treated like crap and wind up in debt because love conquers all. I'll tell you what love conquered. Your livelihood, your ambition, your dreams your freedom, but hey, at least you have two lifelong commitments that'll cause you endless stress. Drain your bank account and turn out exactly the opposite of how you planned. But hey, looks like now you have some sort of a legacy. When do we get to see that movie? Coming this summer. Jack had everything he wanted in life. He was on the fast track to living his dreams, and then he met her. After a whirlwind fling and some drunken sex, they ended up living in misery with their two snot-nosed deadbeat kids. The end. We like to pretend there's always a happy ending, but how often does that happen? I want to see something realistic. If I want a happy ending, I'll go to a massage parlor. <laughs> you know, any time that you say something negative about children, people always want to say, Oh, you can't talk about children that way. They're innocent. Well, hey, so was George Zimmerman, according to the court. <laughs> Have you ever wondered if somebody's tried pooping directly into somebody else's asshole? 
Me neither. But you know something I do wonder about? What are some people doing in the bathroom? You know, sometimes I walk in there and I hear people just making the most horrendous noises. It's like bodybuilders at the gym. Why is it that those two people would make the same sounds? Either people are taking a shit while they lift weights, or they're lifting weights while they take a shit. <laughs> Have you ever heard somebody say, something smells funny? Is that even possible? Because every time they say that, they usually mean that something smells bad. I don't know about you, but I've never caught whiff of some dog shit and just burst out into laughter. If smells could be funny, comedy shows would just consist of dead fish and horse manure being flung at the audience. Why would a venue pay some asshole two twenty thousand dollars to sit here and talk to you for an hour when they could just fling feces at your face? Whenever I tell somebody that they hate the sound of children laughing, they always say, No, oh, but it's the sound of pure happiness. Not for me. As a matter of fact, the sound of it makes me purely unhappy. So where does the happiness part come in for me? You know, jerking off is a lot like trying to get the last of your shampoo out of the bottle. No matter how long and hard you shake, you're just going to end up with a few squirts in the end. You know, speaking of jerking off, you ever noticed women are always talking about how difficult it is to be women? You know, always talking about all the differences that there are, all the inequalities. But to consider this inequality. For a man to keep a woman happy, he has to take her out to dinner. He has to buy her flowers. He has to rub her back. He has to listen to her. But for a woman to make a man happy, she only has to do one thing. Have boobs. <laughs> you know, I live in uh, Midtown Sacramento. So, in a downtown area, there's always a lot of parallel parking. You know, the worst thing about parallel parking is smashing right into somebody else's car. If that fucker wasn't parked there, that would never would have happened. Have you ever noticed that the word alternative is really just an alternative word for bad idea? Anytime somebody says, no, oh, well, we can go with this, or we can go with the alternative. You always know that the alternative is going to be some bad news. Alternative medicine? More like bad idea medicine. <laughs> you know, why is it that butts are only considered sexual if they're nice? If a man's butt is ever shown on TV, it's always used as a joke, because men don't have nice butts. Or sometimes you see those commercials where somebody's wiping a baby's ass. Well, they don't censor those, because baby's asses are only decent. But if some woman is on TV and she has a nice ass, then oh, suddenly we gotta censor it. <laughs> you know, according to the American Heart Association, every hour that you exercise can add two hours to your life. Yeah, but if I spent one of those hours exercising, then really, I only got one hour out of it. Meaning that if I never did that hour of exercise in the first place, I would have just ended up having that hour without having to work for it. You know, everybody has that one friend who goes around repeating stupid, provably false bullshit that they read from some inspirational website on the internet. You know, you know, you only fear what you don't know. That's not true. If I walk down an alleyway and I see that there's ten guys who are gonna jump me and kick my ass, I know exactly why I'm scared. <laughs> Have you ever asked somebody for advice knowing that you're not gonna take it? You dick. Ever notice that people will question fast food like they're teaching you something new? Yes, I know it's unhealthy. That's why I'm eating it. Oh, well, you could just eat a salad. Yeah, or I could never enjoy anything ever again. Nobody really likes salad. That's why there are so many different types of dressings. The quest to make salad taste good. You know what I put on my steak? My fork. <laughs> you know I like to do drugs. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm not proud of it either. Why is it that we always have to be ashamed or proud of everything? Why can't it just be, you know, I do drugs, and that's fine. You know, some people like to say that drugs are a coward's escape from reality. And in my experience, drugs take you to an alternate reality. So really, isn't sobriety just an escape from that reality? <laughs> have you ever had a fart get stuck? How does that happen? I knew I had to fart. I knew it wasn't solid enough to be a shit. But I knew that it wasn't running enough to be diarrhea. But you know, any time that you're in that situation, you always know that it's going to end up coming out when you're talking to your boss or somebody that you're attracted to. And if you actually end up making it outside, to a place where you can safely fart, nothing comes out. How is it that you don't have enough room for molecules to pass by your shit? I look at every shit that I take, I know how big my anus can get. Have you ever had a fart that comes out and scratches your anus? How does that happen? Did I eat a fucking pine cone? 
Is this needle gas? I don't understand how something that's non-physical can scratch the inside of my asshole. <laughs> you ever had somebody say to you, Well, you know, so-and-so once said, Yeah, so-and-so once said that cleanliness is next to godliness. Yeah? Well, Hitler once said kill all the Jews, so does that mean we should live our lives by it? Or is it that he said it too many times, so therefore it's no longer pertinent? Eh, well, I was gonna kill all the Jews, you know, but Hitler said it too many times. He's so full of himself. <laughs> you know, people like to pretend that they're about something just because they're into sports or something that everybody else is into. Well, the only thing that that means is that you're about not being original. Have you ever taken a piss because you had to take a shit? Like you started getting ready to take a piss, but then you realize that if you push it out, you were gonna end up shitting yourself. And so you try as hard as you can to just loosen up on your pee muscles so that the pee can just slide out using the siphon effect. But even then, you realize that the shit is just gonna start sliding out anyway. <laughs> I was watching a documentary the other day about sea creatures, and they started talking about the blue whale. And I started thinking to myself, you know, nothing needs to be as big as the blue whale. Oh, shit. <laughs> You know, I was watching a documentary about the ocean the other day, and they started talking about the blue whale. They said it's believed to be the largest creature that's ever existed. And I thought to myself, you know, nothing needs to be as big as a blue whale. And I can prove it. Is anything else as big as a blue whale? No. So nothing needs to be as big as a blue whale. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that if something takes only four weeks, it seems a lot shorter than if something takes six weeks? Well, that's normal. You know, I had a salad the other day. That's the joke. <laughs> now I'd like everybody to think of when they wasted a whole bunch of time that they could have spent doing something else. Good night!